This is the Northern Territory, the huge slab of Australia that stretches from the central desert to the top end. From the croc-infested waters of the Arafura Sea to the country's biggest inland rock, it's a massive beat. You might go somewhere to get a statement, which is 700 k's away. Downtown Darwin has the youngest population in the country. And the wildest nightlife. It sometimes gets pretty scary. You do learn to know who's who in the zoo. With the thermometer stuck on 30 degrees, something's got to give. The build-up drives everybody nuts. Where's the crowbar now? Keeping the peace in this tropo town calls for a special breed of cop. And up here, they breed them tough. It is one of the last frontiers. You only got to get in the water and something's bound to bite you. couple of dodgy fishermen off the road. What else have you had? A couple of cones. A desperate effort to save a life. You need to talk to me, OK? How many tablets have you taken? And keeping a bikey gang at bay. Get over this side of the road. I heard a hell angels, but wait. you wait. It's a typical Friday night for Wombat and his partner, Constable Luke McIntosh. Wombat Macca are cruising the streets of Darwin when they spot a car driving without lights. Put your lights on. Looks like it's pissed. They set up a road trap, but the driver takes off. Where'd he go? Stay in the car. Triple four, we have a trap, Wood Street, Darwin City. How you going, mate? How are you today? Oh, really not a good mood, eh? No? What was that? Don't trip there. This driver's day is about to get a whole lot worse. While Macca puts the bloke on the breathalyzer, Wombat does a rego check. Oh, well, good news for you, you're not over the limit. But then comes the bad news. Well, so, stand by. He's got conditions from New South Wales where if he's driving a vehicle, he's got to be in company with a licensed passenger. We're just running some checks now on the passenger to make sure he's fully licensed. And we're going to do some more checks on his conditions, what he's supposed to be doing, what he's not supposed to be doing. And he took off at speed, so obviously he had something to hide, something to run for. I'm trying to work out what that is. Wombat has a word to the passenger, who's up for a chat. Besides alcohol, what else have you had? Oh, just a uh, couple of cones. Couple of cones. Uh, All right. Okay. Yeah, I, I All right. go home on Sunday. Where are the drugs inside the car? No, no. I'm about to search your car. Let, let us know. We're going to search it again. You've admitted to me you've had a couple of cones. Yeah, the police already been through it on the wall. You can check up the CIB and all with it. Yeah, I'll check up. I'll check yeah. up. Search me bag. Please. All right. It seems these crusty characters have already had words with the cops earlier tonight. Macca recalls hearing the incident over the radio. Oh, you were down at uh, Duckbond Way, Fisherman's yeah. Wharf. Yeah. 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 By now, Constable Doug Roberts is on the scene, so Wombat puts him in the picture. Those bikes have been trapped before, a couple of hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. Smoking cones down by the waterfront. But the passenger is determined to get his point of view across. And he's not a happy fisherman. My bag was searched five minutes ago, right on Fisherman's Wall, and nothing was found and nothing on me. I'm just a visitor. I go home on Sunday, right afternoon, and now they want to search me bags and me again when I've done nothing wrong. I'm, I'm just an innocent person getting the lift. And I'm a homeless person, by the way. Yeah but I've got my own place in Sydney, which I'm going back to, me and my wife, in Sydney, here on Sunday. He also has an interesting take on his rights. The driver's done the wrong thing by not having his headlights on. 
But because I'm a, a visitor, I shouldn't be sure. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Wombat prepares to search the car. You've admitted to me there's cannabis use, OK? Is there anything in this car? You can point me in the right direction now while I'm about to search it. Excuse me, it's not my car. OK. Is there any cannabis in this car? No, not as far as I know. Is that your bag there? Yep, and, and the police searched it five minutes ago. Yep, and you can search me too, officer. I've got nothing to hide. This bloke seems to have changed his tune about the police. And I know the police are only doing their job. They're good people, they are. And all the search reveals is that he's a true blue type. You got the flag, brother? Oh, that's right, brother. I'm Australian, I'm born and bred. I'm proud to be Australian. Wombat compares notes with the detectives who pulled these fellas over earlier. So, yeah, if you've already tipped him out, we won't bother doing it again. Uh... The detective gives him a heads up on a possible item in the car. Is he... <laughs> Where's his fish? OK. <laughs> I'll ask him about his fish. All right, mate, thank you. Yeah, apparently he's got a fish in the back seat. I'd well, rather smell it tomorrow morning. By coincidence, this car was called in as a uh, vehicle with suspicious persons in it, and they found no drugs. So rather than go through the whole thing again, we'll get the driver back to the police station, see what he registers on the BA machine, and uh, take it from there. This is not the best news for the passenger, who has now lost his ride. Are well, you going to take him away? Yeah, he's under arrest. Oh, great. He gathers up his kit and heads off into the night while the driver with the fishy licence is going to get a ride in the paddy wagon. We've got the driver under arrest because apparently he's got to be with a, a licensed passenger and he's got to be himself on zero alcohol conditions. So. Down at the watch house, the driver blows 0.084. With the restrictions on his licence, this bloke is up for a hefty penalty. Sergeant Amy Meredith is out on a usual night patrol. The young mother was recently widowed when her husband Brett died after taking a blow to the head. So she's been doing it tough. I've been to jobs where people have been punched. Brett was killed by one punch. Um, and it's hard to switch off your emotions, but you need to. And she seems to be coping well. With the kids being so young, working shift work now, I can tuck them into bed and and come out and work the night shift and be there for them when they wake up in the morning and, and get them ready for school and, and take them to school and, and spend days off with them, um, more time with them than I did working a normal job. Police work in Darwin can be unpredictable, but there's one nightly routine that Amy never misses. Hello, Mum. What are you doing, darling? You going to bed? Yeah. I love you. Doing my chores. Oh, well done. You'll be good, OK? OK. We'll go on the motorbike tomorrow if you're good. OK. OK. Amy is heading along the Stewart Highway when she spots a woman staggering around on the side of the road. Oh, yes, she, she pulls over to investigate. The woman is dazed and intoxicated. It's fair to assume she's knocked back one too many at the nearby casino. 202, I'm off with a drunk person, a lady. She's uh, passed out on the side of Gilruth Avenue out the front of casino. I need to get you off the road. We've got cars going to come down here. Are you able to stand up for me? Uh, Give me a hand. Ready? Right. I've got cars coming at me. I need you to help me out here, OK? Oh. All right, you ready? You gonna be able to stand up? Ready? Amy has seen more than her fair share of drinkers in this condition, but with traffic speeding past on this busy highway, she needs to act promptly. It takes a certain type of person to do the job that we do and to love it as much as I do. Have your weenies this morning or what? 
Oh. All right, we're off the road. Okay. Oh. Okay. There we go. Pull your dress down, eh? But as Amy is collecting the woman's keys, a piece of paper catches her eye. Oh. The case is about to take a very sinister turn. Shit. 202, I'm gonna need an ambulance to my location. I've uh, found a note saying sorry and a whole bottle of tamazepam is uh, gone. It looks like Amy has a suicide attempt on her hands. She acts quickly. All right, you need to talk to me, OK? You need to stay awake, OK? How many tablets have you taken? While getting information out of the woman would be helpful, what's even more critical is keeping her awake for as long as possible. How many tablets have you taken? <laughs> How many? The whole bottle? Yeah. Stay with me, okay? Stay awake. How many were in the bottle? How many? Was it the whole bottle? Amy checks the date on the bottle. Her worst fears are realised. She phones in the bad news. Yeah, Roger, I got a. Uh, looks like a whole bottle of tamazepam has been consumed. She only filled the script today. Coming up. Sean Hill has his hands full. No worries, I'm reporting this anyway. No worries. Amy has come across a woman lying by the side of the road. After dragging her to safety, she's made a shocking discovery. The woman has taken a large quantity of sleeping tablets. For Amy, the wait for an ambulance to arrive is an agonising one but she's determined not to let this woman slip away. I need you to talk to me. All right, did you take all of those tablets? Yeah. Yep, okay. For a moment, Amy seems to get through. Where do you live? I need you to stay awake, I need you to stay with me. Your baby? Yeah? How old's she? But the woman slips into unconsciousness. Amy's worried the ambulance may get here too late. She's asleep. And a whole bottle gone. Tamazepam is used um, by many people who attempt self-harm. It's a, uh, a sleeping tablet. And it's very, very strong. Backup arrives, but what this woman needs is an ambulance, fast. She's gone downhill since we saw her. She was walking five minutes ago, now she's completely passed out. It's a really strong sedative. Once the drugs get into her system, she could start suffering, shut down of her liver, her kidneys, everything. Pretty, uh, pretty rapid. Then the officer makes a discovery. She's been on the phone to um, Lifeline, 24 hour support. I think she's attempted self-harm before. She's got some scarring to her wrist. It seems the woman's cries for help were not loud enough. Sorry, life sucks and it is okay. Hello guys. Hello, how are you going? This lady here. This lady was seen uh, stumbling down the hill. Yeah. Um, she then passed out in front on the road here. I thought she was just intoxicated. She's got a note there that says life sucks. Okay. Alright. Just gotta lift you up here very quickly. One, two, three. The Ambos work swiftly and the woman is soon on her way to hospital. Situations like this are harrowing, but Amy and her team have done all they can. Thanks to their quick thinking, this woman may get to see her baby girl again. 
As a mother, Amy can relate. It's just pretty, pretty messed up. So hopefully they um, can get up to the hospital and get her treated. That's how quickly it happens, you know. At first I thought she was just a drunk person, so we stopped for that. And lucky that we did, because she's gone downhill very quickly in the space of 10 minutes. Saturday nights in Darwin are always busy for the City Safe team. The foot patrol that keep the peace in the party precinct. Sergeant Sean Patterson and Senior Constable Josh Streeter muster their troops before heading out. Tonight, they're on the lookout for some shady characters, members of an outlaw motorcycle gang. If we see him, he can be arrested for an assault on Thursday night. He's a fairly big unit. He's known to snap at the drop of a hat, so just be careful when you deal with him. The last three years, I've been doing City Safe, so I love the hands-on stuff. I love the action. I love preventing fights. Speak to him first to see if you can stop the fight. It's something that makes me want to come to work every night. That's the end of the muster, and we'll get out there and, like I said, if you need anything, just go pat on myself. Don't be afraid to argue the toss with us. If you think something's not done right, just let us know and we'll discuss it and we can sort it out. Cool. Josh and the team are equipped for action, and it's quite a load to carry around in the Darwin heat. It's about 10 kilos around the waist. Issue boots are about a kilo each, and the hat keeps all the humidity in. It gets it's, it's pretty hot walking around. So I'm wearing three layers of clothing in what, 35 degree temperatures and humidity up around 90%. I walked out, I'm already started sweating. The team check out monsoons, where the party's pumping. Four young fellas have donned their finest to get into the crowded club, but their gender bender scam doesn't seem to be working. It's just funny to watch the stuff that people do when they're drunk and you're, you're hoping that you don't do the same stuff. But it's not all fun and games. There are the usual punters who have to be persuaded to leave the area quietly. Yeah, this is the third time you've been kicked out of the licence premises, all right? If you don't leave... No, bullshit. It's, no, yes, it's, 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 it's two no, times it's too many. Time. Whatever, I don't care. Once no, is too... Sorry, no, sorry. Well, yeah, once is more than enough and then you should walk away. Yeah, all right, yeah, if you sorry. come, try to get back into this pub or yeah, another no, club. You're going to go and watch us. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Okay, so just go. Oh, yeah. Always got to be on the gaming house and relax into just talking to people on the street, having a laugh. You've got to be switched on all the time. Meanwhile, Constable Sean Hill has his hands full with a mouthy young lady. No worries, I'm reporting this anyway. No worries. Yep. Are you going to be good and jump in? Yeah, no worries, I am. No worries, ma'am. Take your bag off. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> She's been evicted from the nightclub. And she's hanging out in the front, carrying on, swearing, waving her arms around. Asked her to leave several times. She just continued to yell abuse. Yeah. Didn't want to listen. She's going to spend a night in the cell. So, one blanket, one sleep. It'll be good in the morning. The team do a walk through shenanigans, where a rowdy Irishman has been asked to leave. In the interest of keeping the peace, Josh decides to give him a fair go. 15 minutes of grace, man. If I see you on the streets after that, upstairs, lock up. Drunk in a public place, OK? All right, thanks, man. Ben, cool. Thank you. See you later. But the Irishman pushes his luck. Let's talk. More right. walk. Can I kebab? No. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. Keep no, on. no, no. This kebab shop. Shit. How about the kebab shop around the corner now? You know the one beside there. Meanwhile, the clock's ticking oh, down. Fair enough, yeah, too. Minutes, yeah. Josh makes this kebab connoisseur an offer he can't refuse. It's, it's either this right. kebab or watch house. The City Safe team continue their foot patrol, and everyone seems to be playing by the rules. Even the frocked up fellas have found a bouncer who's prepared to uphold the dress code. But in this heat, spot fires can start quickly. Within minutes, Josh spies a major flare up. Oi. I don't shit, do shit. Get over this side of the road. I heard a hell angels, but Oi. you wait. A big bloke has taken on a group of very shady characters. So Josh swiftly steps in. 
hosing down the would-be hero. I'm gonna try one bloke, just one big bloke to start on. Josh and the City Safe team have pulled aside a big bloke who's picked a fight in a nightclub with a gang of five. I just have a cigarette, bro. I don't even smoke smokes. And they're smoking in the room, and I just look, bro, I don't smoke, I just gonna walk away. Well, you're trying to do the club a favour, yeah? Yeah. Unfortunately, the five smokers have connections to the Hells Angels bikies. I was trying to smoke in the club, and all I did was walk in the door, and they said, why, why are you my last yeah. in smoking? Why do you chase them like I didn't chase shit. He you're wanted to No, me. you're chasing them. Leave it alone. If I'm going to chase yeah. him, I would have been running down there already. Can't. Well, no. It's not going to happen tonight. We know who they are. There was and about what? five... Listen, there was about five of those blokes coming after you. Can I try them or what? No, you can't. Can I, I try one gonna... bloke? Just one no. big bloke to start That's not, You know that doesn't happen like that in the I'm streets of Darwin. Yeah, one bloke doesn't fight one bloke. No, how are you getting home? I'll walk no, home. I'll get no, home. I'll don't. take him home. No, I'll walk at home. That taxi there, I'd prefer you to get into that, man. Okay. Because if you, get, if you walk, you're going to meet up with them down the street yeah, and it's going to be on. The big bloke gets a police escort over to a taxi rank. I'm trying to get a route, and them all want to fight me. Look, we're going to the watch house for the night. Just keep walking, eh? Just keep going. Then it's time to have a serious word to the bikies. Pato, we'll go tell these guys to go home, because I think the guy in the red shirt, he's um, Hells Angel associate. With Pato and a Mountie backing him up, Josh approaches the gang. Good mate. He's gonna leave it tonight, eh? Yeah, we're all yeah. bust, right. man. We're just having a few drinks with the girls here, so we're a bit yeah. off soon. We don't want any trouble. Nah, either. neither do we. He just yeah, carried on. Like they they just spat on a girl inside and yeah. carried on like a yeah. you know, so all good. And it's all good for Josh, who has once again managed to keep the peace in the big kids' playground. But not for long. Two young blokes have been refused entry at the Hot Potato Club. And they're hopping mad. Are you going to leave me out or what? We're not going to argue. It's two sides of the story. We're not going to argue. I'm not going to argue. You just don't know what's going on. I'll shoot you. Let's go. Tonight, you're not going to sort anything out by being in aggressive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because right now, they look like they're done the right thing and you don't look like you've done the right thing. No, no, no. But the thing is, you're not going to sort anything out by being in aggressive. Because right now, they look like they've done the right thing and you don't look like you've done the right thing. No, no, no. But the thing is, we weren't aggressive, mate. At the end of the day, there's one rule. You've got to ask to leave. Leave, mate. There's not gonna, no, no need to stand here and argue. It doesn't on. matter. They're saying it does matter. Licenses. It does matter, mate. It's time to go. License, time mate. to go, brother. It's out. For the next few hours, the police presence keeps the party to a dull roar. Pretty soon, though, it's lockout time and things start to get messy again. As the punters take the party mood into the street, love is definitely in the air. And that's the city safe on Mitchell Street. Home and host. Until next weekend. One of the things that I love about City Safe is there's a lot of people from various backgrounds up here. You just see everything. 